The first time a celebrity slid into my DMs, I actually didn't see for about two years. Hi, I'm Rina Sawayama, and we're playing first and last with BuzzFeed APOP. First red carpet was the Brit Awards, and I was wearing Balmain couture. It was this massive purple dress, and I had braces, like train track braces, and I loved my look. I thought it was super cute, but because it was quarantine and it was still like COVID times, the whole red carpet was outside, and I remember being freezing the entire time and I, my teeth were like chattering and it was like I couldn't talk and I couldn't give interviews because everything was outside all the photography was outside all the interviews were outside and uh, I was dreading that that would be the case this year but it, thank god it wasn't it was all inside the last red carpet was the John Wick premiere in New York and I was wearing Tom Brown which was very cool I loved that look and Ian McShane describe me as a tartan samurai. I kind of do agree. <laughs> the first time a celebrity slid into my DMs, I actually didn't see for about two years, which was a big regret of mine because that person turned out to be Rosalia. She said she was a fan of my music, but I only opened it two years later. And I was like, hey, are you still a fan of my music? <laughs> and the last time a celebrity slid into my DMs, we actually had a really lovely uh, dinner with some friends. We met for the first time and that was Simi Lu. To the Asian community, you know, he means a lot and to chat about things and I believe he's starting to do music as well. So we were kind of talking about the first time he's doing music and performing and then the first time I'm doing acting. So we were like able to share a lot of ideas there. First time I saw Keanu Reeves was in the dojo, the gym that we were training in, in Berlin. And it was, I think it was the, pretty much the first day of training that I met him. And yeah, we were just both training and sweaty and <laughs> it was not glamorous. <laughs> the last time I saw Keanu was at the New York premiere. So the first time I was on set for John Wick, was actually, it wasn't for my scene. I wanted to see what the set was like because I've never been in front of movie cameras before. I'd never been in such a big set before. So I wanted to prepare myself. And it was a scene with Keanu. I don't want to give any spoilers, but it was a really cool scene with a tiny bit of action. So I really was glad that I went. So the last time I was on set for John Wick, it was just so cold. It was in New York. We were shooting a uh, a scene in a train, but it, the train was actually outside. So it was absolutely freezing, I remember. But I remember after finishing that and you know, at the end of everyone's, um, each cast member, if that is their last scene, then we do like a big clap and we, you know, make a big deal out of it. And, you know, being able to be surrounded by the people who I've worked with, you get so close, you see them more than you, you see your family or partner or whatever, you know, it's like really crazy intimate relationship you have with these people. And to say bye to them was crazy. So the first day of training for John Wick, summer of 2021, and because of COVID, I couldn't take any, any team members, any family, anyone like that. So I just went on my own and I was staying in a hotel in Berlin. The first day of training was just drills. It was just pretty easy stuff, but I felt a little twinge in my right side of my back, which I then, proceeded to ignore because I was too embarrassed to tell anyone that something had happened. It was a pinched nerve. And so at that point, the production were like, okay, you need to take a week off. I felt so embarrassed because it was the first day, first drill, and all these people around me, I was training with all these stunt people who were so, who were just athletes, they're insane. Last day of training for John Wick, uh, we were shooting in this incredible building called the ICC in Berlin, which is this crazy, I want to say brutalist architecture, like a World Heritage site it was incredible. But one of the rooms we were able to use and set up the mats and it was a lot of, there was a lot of action scenes filmed in that, on that set. So we were able to do some training. And nothing will prepare you for shooting the action sequence that you've learned during the day and shooting it at 2 a.m. in the morning. Your body doesn't feel the same way. 
So the first time I've embarrassed myself on stage, I would say all my first like early shows, I think I overproduced the show for the size of the stage. I always thought I want to bring an arena level show wherever I go. And that would apply to venues that can hold 150 people. And so even when we were playing 150 cap venues, I had a wind machine at the front, for example. And when I played the Mercury Lounge, we had a outfit change, where I, but there was no exit off the stage. So I had to like exit and through the audience. It was just too much, <laughs> but it was fun. It was so fun. But looking back now, I'm literally like, what was I doing? <laughs> Last time I embarrassed myself on stage. I don't do this often. I forgot the lyrics to a song. It's weird. It's the songs that I'll remember the most, but I'll just completely blank out. I'll often forget the excess dance. I don't know why it just slips my mind. Oh, I think it's because I've been doing different dances in the dance break. I, I did one where I did the Oh My God dance, OMG dance by New Jeans. And then I did the Megan dance. And so I think my brain doesn't really know what dance I'm meant to be doing at that point. So when I have to do the actual excess dance break, I don't know. The first time hearing my music in public was on the radio. I believe it was Cyber Stockholm Syndrome on Radio 1 or Radio 4, 2, something like that on BBC Radio in the UK. That was really crazy. I remember screaming. It was with, I think I was with my whole, uh, my dancers and my tour crew. So it was a very small tour crew at the time, but we were all in a van and we were just screaming. That was cool. Last time I heard my music in public. I was in Tower Records in Japan. So I went there, but I think someone there who works there put, started to put my music on and that was a really cute moment. But I sometimes hear like excess in Starbucks and that's cool because I go to Starbucks a lot. So like, that's weird. I've grown up eating Japanese food all my life. My mum insisted on cooking Japanese meals, which was really nice in hindsight because I can't imagine it was very easy to get the ingredients back in the 90s in London. So um, you can barely get soy sauce in the supermarkets so and now you can anywhere. So it, things have come a long way. Okay, my mum's favorite uh, meal to cook me and my favorite meal that she cooks for me is called tarekatsu. Pork cutlet that's beaten very thin, breaded, then doused in this kind of sweet sauce at the end. And it's my favorite thing ever. The last Japanese meal I ate, I had Sushi Stop from LA, which is my favorite sushi place because I hate paying a lot of money for sushi. Because I'm so used to eating cheap sushi in Japan, I just hate paying a ridiculous amount. And Sushi Stop always does like a buy one, get one free deal, which we love. Well, first time I visited Japan after I moved to the to the UK when I was five was summer holidays. So I would go back every holiday, I think summer, and we tried to go back in the winter as well because all my family, including my dad, were in Japan. Yeah, I saw them, I guess, twice or three times a year. My earliest memories of visiting Japan was going to uh, back to where my uh, mum's side of the family are from in Niigata, which is, if you imagine, like the backdrop of a Ghibli movie, that's exactly what it's like rice paddy fields and like cycling between them uh mountains in the background really pure fresh air that's what niigata is like so last time i visited japan was when i did my first ever headline show back in january it was at the garden theater in tokyo and it was my biggest headline show six thousand 300 people or something like that. That was absolutely magical. And I was able to spend some time with my mom and see my nephew. And that was the first time I'd really gone back and spent time since the pandemic. So it was really nice to be able to spend some ex extended time there. I guess my first notable fan experience would have been after lockdown. And after that, it was kind of when I started to first get recognized, like on the tube or on the train or just out and about in London. Uh, it took me a minute to get used to because that, you know, going from not meeting anyone, not wanting to see anyone to then strangers basically saying hi to you is a bit weird, but now I love it. The last fan experience was I met a couple of my uh, fans who've been with me for a long time and they actually came and waited outside of the Good Morning America filming, which is crazy because they come to my shows in London and uh, in America and so for them to be there was awesome. I think someone called Kimberly has got her number wrong <laughs> so I keep getting calls from people asking for Kimberly so that's a constant weird text or weird phone call that I get. My last weird text that I got is I have a hilarious TikTok 
iMessage group with my team and that gets really out of control. <laughs> the last one we got was someone opened up Sims 4 on their laptop and then was frying an egg on the laptop because you know how it like the fan goes insane when you open <laughs> Sims 4. So that's it. That's my first and last. I hope you enjoyed. I'm promoting a film, a little indie film called John Wick 4. I'm joking. It's out everywhere right now. So you should go see it. My character is called Akira and she's badass and so awesome. So please go watch it. Even if you haven't seen the first three, it's still really enjoyable. So go.